Hello, this is Jillian, and I am going to do this video as partly an experiment just to test out how my iPhone and microphone work together, um, and partly just to show off some of my haul from uh, vacation. Uh, while I was on two weeks vacation, of course, I had more time to browse the internet and to catch up on podcasts and hear about a lot of neat products. And so I shopped a lot, bought a lot, and those things have arrived. And so just for fun, I thought I would make this video and just give a quick overview, not detailed reviews, of some of the fun things that I bought while I was on vacation. With the excuse, of course, I didn't have to pay for airfare because it was a staycation. So, of course, more money to spend on stationery. And then at the end, for a bonus, uh, I'll talk about some masks that I also ordered um, on vacation. So first, um, Endless, the uh, folks behind the Endless Recorder Notebook have now come out with a pocket-sized notebook with their own paper rather than Tomoe, Tomoe, Tomoe River. And they were giving away packs of two packs of these of their first edition uh, if you would just pay postage. And so they're now sold out, but I signed up for that. And so those just arrived yesterday. They took a bit of a detour at the very end with a FedEx delivering them to the wrong house on the street, but I did get them this morning. So here they are, the uh, edition uh, one, the storybook notebook with uh, the lunar uh, surface pictures on them. And uh, uh, they're just your standard pocket size notebook. They're a uh, uh, dot grid. And as I said, they're not Tomoe River. Uh, and so I did a quick ink test with them with just what I happen to have uh, inked up at the moment. Um, and they function pretty well. They, they don't work. The paper isn't as good as Tomoe River uh, for fountain pens, but it's certainly way better for fountain pens than your typical kind of pocket notebook. Uh, better than, I think, than field notes or some of your other um, uh, more broad-based pocket notebooks. They're going for multiple kinds of uh, writing instruments. I tested them with... Uh, just several different fountain pen inks, and then also with uh, a Sharpie pen, a fine point Sharpie, and then two pencils, um, and a Pilot Friction pen, and uh, there was um, no bleed through, uh, minimal show through, and I would say there was a bit of feathering, maybe more than I would expect, but nothing noticeable. I mean, if I hadn't like gone to look at it, I I wouldn't even notice it. And I would, they, it shows up uh, uh, sh the shading inks really well, but it does not show sheen all that well. The the gentle grenade, which is the only sheener I've got in here. Um, you can see the hints of the sheen coming through, like that it's beginning to get the idea of sheening, but it's not like a Tomoe River sheen. But this is certainly a very good paper for an everyday pocket notebook, uh, and it's probably better for a pocket notebook than Tomoe River because it's not going to take as long to dry. And for those of us who are just jotting something down quickly on the run, that might be a good... Um, a good thing and I love on the back uh, it says edition one moonshot one small page turn for man one giant idea for mankind so that was my my first uh, acquisition and then the second package came from Yoseka stationery now I had heard of Yoseka stationery but didn't really know uh, much about them but when I caught up on my podcast I listened to uh, episode 19 of the stationery cafe which featured Yoseka Stationery, and so that caused me to then go and look up their website, and of course that then caused me to put in an order. So um, I am not the kind of person that squeeze over stationery, and not particularly the kind of person who's into all the kind of Japanese um, extra stationery beyond fountain pens and paper, but uh, Yoseka Stationery, which is not Japanese, it's I believe uh, uh, Taiwanese uh, uh, in, in ethnic uh, background. They're in New York, but they're also tied to the parent company um, uh, uh, in Asia. Uh, they definitely caused me to squee. I opened up, the first thing when I opened up the package, the packaging was wonderful, everything was well padded, and each part of the order was either in a paper bag or in craft paper. Uh, affixed with very cute washi tape. 
So, um, uh, def and then with their, uh, with their brand stamp on it, and again, this was all folded very nicely, like kind of an envelope, and it was all affixed with washi tape. So major cuteness in the packaging, as well as being very safe. Uh, they had ink samples that traveled fine, uh, totally good uh, packaging. And then I open it up first, of course, I get the sticker. Everybody has to send a sticker nowadays. So there is the Yoseka Stationery Logo sticker. Uh, they sent an ink sample swatch card uh, so I could do some swatches. I have not done that because I actually have to get back to work and don't want to go down the rabbit hole of swatching my inks this afternoon. <coughs> and then we get to the ink samples themselves. Those of you who are familiar with Birmingham pens and their ink sample program, you know that when Birmingham first started doing their ink samples, they also used these utterly adorable uh, glass jars that uh, have the, the metal top and, uh, and that um, Nick Birmingham's um, moved away from them because they're hard to store in quantity compared to the vials that we're used to that you can put in in racks. But they're, these are utterly cute. And they have the Yoseka brand on the top and then the label and that's handwritten. Uh, this one is the Sailor Ink Studio 123. And I thought I would open them up and just do like an ink drop to test some of the, the other paper that I'm about to show you. And when I unscrewed the cap, I saw lo and behold, they have put little bit of plastic wrap over it by hand inside to keep it from leaking. So more props for absolutely functional but also adorable packaging from Yoseka. I got three samples. One of uh, 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 Sailor Ink Studio 123, one of Sailor Gentle Apricot, and then one of Kinyo Oto Hisoku, which is kind of a, a blue-green, and it was a, a custom uh, ink done uh, for a Tokyo event or shop and isn't as um, commonly uh, stocked. Um, and... The thing about these these jars, and I'm not sure actually now that I speak it if they're glass or just a very good quality plastic, but they're um, but if you uh, they keep track, Yoseka keeps track of how many you have ordered from them, and when you have ordered ten, they then send you some way of shipping them back to you, and they will recycle them or reuse them in some way. I don't have that up in front of me to know the details, but they're trying to be environmentally are responsible with these adorable little jars. So, um, so major props for that. Uh, then the, another thing I ordered from them was these uh, letterpress paper cat coasters. So my cat Roxy is not in the room right now, but I'm sure she is looking forward to seeing me use these cat coasters. And then the main item in my Yoseka stationery order was my uh, the Yoseka notebook. This, they've just come out with themselves. This is their house-branded notebook. They have partnered with one of their uh, paper companies that they were buying, um, a, a company called Conifer. They were stocking Conifer notebooks. They really liked Conifer's paper, but they wanted to change up the form factor a bit. So now Yoseka is using Conifer paper in their own branded notebooks. And these are very um, in keeping with their kind of minimalistic um, style as a, as a brand. And so it's a hard uh, kind of chipboard cover uh, with just a paper wrapping with their branding on it. Uh, the, the spine is open and the paper inside is blank. Now normally I am not a blank paper person. Uh, I always do, could do either a lined or a grid. But I, I really wanted to try this notebook, so I went ahead and ordered it, even though it's a blank sheet uh, paper, and you can put a, a grid behind it of your own of your own making. I did some ink tests on it, and it performs really, really well. It's a thicker paper than Tomoe River, um, uh, but has all the similar uh, qualities with ink. It shows shading and sheen really well. And I can't tell um, if you can see the, she the sheening going on there in the Sailor uh, Gentle, but it is just rocking the sheen as well as the shading uh, and the shading in the Mysterious Blue, which is uh, 
my favorite everyday ink. I also tested it with um, Sharpie Pen, uh, Unicura Toga 5 uh, millimeter lead. Uh, I dumped a whole bunch of Pelican Turquoise on there and a little bit of Sailor Blue from a cartridge that I've had loaded in a pen for a while, so it's kind of dark, um, to see how the paper would handle kind of quantities of ink. And it is, there was some bleed through where I literally just poured the Pelican ink on the page, but um, everything else, uh, you don't get any blue bleed through and not a whole lot of show through. So uh, uh, the pencil, I'm not a pencil person, so I can't tell you anything about how the lead felt on the paper or anything like that, but it erases cleanly, that much I can test. So, um, so you know, really good performance for both uh, pencil and fountain pen and even a fine line Sharpie pen on this, this paper. So I'm really impressed with this notebook and look forward to, uh, to using it as I work my way through a stack of A5 notebooks I bought for myself recently. Um, the other stationary item that I bought was from uh, Gold Spot Pens, one of my regular uh, uh, temptations, and this is the Laban uh, 325 Ocean Blue. I put it up on my Instagram a couple days ago. I really like this pen. Uh, I'm a turquoise fanatic, so the, the, the color is marvelous. I love that kind of flaked uh, patterns in, in, a, in a resin, so that's great. And the, the ivory color that has kind of a darker threading through it to kind of evoke a beach. Um, and just like all the reviews say, it's too heavy, too, the cap is too heavy to post. It, it will physically post but it's very back weighted if you do that. So you wanna write with this one unposted. Um, but I love the feel of the nib. I got it in a fine. Uh, it's very smooth out of the box and has just a hint of feedback. Um, not quite as much, I would say, as like a sailor, um, but just the merest hint of feedback so that you know you're writing on the paper. I'm really liking the feel of this pen. I've been writing with it nonstop for the three days since I acquired it. So i um, really glad that, uh, to get this uh, uh, pen. So that is the extent of my stationary haul while on vacation. But of course, since we're in Corona Tide and I work uh, in a people-centered job, I need to have a variety of masks. So I've been working with, uh, you know, kind of a makeshift collection of some homemade ones from friends and some, uh, uh, some from, uh, uh, from our friends at Rickshaw, which were all right, but just didn't work as well for me personally. So I've discovered two that seem to have some promise. Um, one set is from a company in Vermont called Bow Ties, B-E-A-U, Bow Ties, and they make men's bow ties and men's uh, 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 regular ties and cummerbunds and things of that nature. And so it's a natural that they would move into uh, masks. And you can actually, if you're a guy, or if you're a gal who likes to wear ties, you can get um, uh, masks and, uh, ties that match your mask. But I got about half a, d a dozen different. They're, you know, they're kind of shirt, uh, you, nice cotton, lightweight cotton fabric, but they're double layer and they have a pocket in the in them so you can put a any kind of filter material in there that you want. They have some sort of wire uh, in the nose piece. Um, I wore this one yesterday a fair amount and it was as comfortable as any other mask that I've worn and uh, certainly nice and colorful. And so I've now got a whole wardrobe of bow tie masks. This one, I've got a nice navy blue and uh, forest green kind of uh, check there. I've got, uh, you know, uh, pink and uh, a blue stripe. I've got a lovely magenta and blue paisley pattern. I've got black and white houndstooth because if you didn't know, I'm a priest and spend a lot of my time in black shirts with white collars. So this will work well with those or when I'm in white vestments. And then, um, uh, just not to wear in my professional capacity or when anyone who uh, I know professionally would see me, but here is one that uh, they also sell. They, um, 
and they sell it in red as well, so they're a nonpartisan company, and I just happened to buy the blue one. Uh, and here's what, this is the extra large size. There you go. And this is the regular size. So they fit well and the wires hold them around your nose and they don't particularly fog up your glasses that much. So there you go. And then I've also bought from a company that's advertising on Instagram a lot, uh, Starks Vacuums uh, uh, in, on the West Coast. I ordered three masks from them. I haven't had a chance to actually wear this one yet uh, around and about, so I don't know how I'm gonna like it for comfort, but it's three layers and the middle layer is actually in there. You don't have to insert it. And it's some sort of filtration layer, which I imagine as a vacuum company, Starks probably knows where to get like filtration kind of fabrics. So this has a nose flap to keep the fogging down on your glasses. So this is my Starks mask. And I also have uh, uh, in blue and black, and uh, it took them a while. Both of these companies were a bit backed up, um, but the masks did arrive, and so those ads that you see for Starks, if you're wondering if they're real, since so many Instagram ads are for sham companies, Starks is real, and I got the masks. Um, I also got another mask that I don't have up here to show you. I, uh, I posted it a couple days ago. It has like a clear plastic cut out so that people can uh, can read lips when you're talking and that I'm I'm not as impressed with that because it just fogs up too much. I'm still going to give it a try with some anti-fog techniques but unfortunately it was way more expensive than any of these others uh, but it doesn't seem to quite do the job when you have to talk a lot. Um, so that was what I uh, acquired in my uh, shopping spree on vacation, and I just wanted to uh, share it with you and also uh, experiment with my, um, with my video. So uh, talk to you later, but probably not so often on video.